Hi guys, this is Eric from Dumb Game Dev, and today I'm going to be making a low poly table and chair. And this is part of our medieval prop set using U Modeler. But of course, the skills you learned here you can use to sort of model um, anything once you get the hang of it. So why don't we just get started and add a 3D object, mesh with U Modeler, and like normal, I'm going to add a box. And I like my boxes to be, um, you know, sort of a very specific size. I don't like them to be you know, random numbers. It's just the OCD in me. So we're going to add in our loop slices right away. Love those loop slices. And actually, why don't we just add in this one here first. There we go. Make them two. So we use this as sort of the indent in the table. And we'll go ahead and grab that right away grab a loop and let's try and use this multi push tool we want the vertex normal and sometimes I found it doesn't appear until you click in as you've seen so you can see even though I'm moving it um, you can't really see it in a lot of cases but once we click in there it is and it's a little bit farther than I want it to be um, but let's see if we can fix that. So the next thing I'm going to do is just add another loop slice in here, and right in the middle. And now that loop slice in the middle, let's see if we can grab these edge loops. I'm not sure if this is possible or not. Okay. That's not the slice we want. There we go. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, so sometimes this can be a little bit touchy. Um, to fix this, let's just say select only visible, so I'm not grabbing anything on the back side. And now, let's try, okay. Now we should be able to just scale these out. A little bit. I probably want to scale more on this axis. And there we go, that's better, we have something um, that sort of has a nice shape to it. The next thing I want to do is add the legs on. I always add them on the top and then reverse the table over. I'm trying to draw upside down and unity is a real pain in the butt. And to do this is really simple. We can just use these box shapes and it will just allow us to draw a box right here onto the table. And if you don't draw it quite where you want or maybe your legs too big, we can just adjust that at the beginning. Yeah, okay, something like that's fine. And I, I can still grab the whole thing just by making a loop select and grabbing it. But if you grab the top and we go increase the selection, it's going to increase the selection in all directions. And that works for me. And we'll put it somewhere near the edge. Just grab and drag this out to however big you want. And I'm going to make this a little bit... Um, tweak this a little bit so that it's a little bit less uniform. You know? Also, actually, I should adjust my table. I should do that right now before. So you can see this table has a little more uh, shape to it, which makes it a little more cartoony. You know, I'm not really the best artist, but um, you know, we can still oopsie. We can still do that. For some reason, though, I'm not really able to see these loops. Let's try again here, loop slice. There we go. And actually, you know, now that we've beveled the table, it's not so um, easy here. What we can do, hopefully, though, is just draw a line from here to that one. And a line from here to it does have a little snap sometimes you can just get it by snapping oh there we go and then now that should do it so let's try and just grab this as a loop okay, apparently not I have to do it this way 
And let's see if we can just scale this a little bit. So that's better for me. It gives a table just a little bit of shape. You could do one or two or however many you want. And uh, I think I accidentally added some loops here. That's okay, we'll just leave those in. So I, I won't add one there. Okay, let's keep going. So we've got these, this here, and instead of creating you know, more of these, we can just use the mirror tool like we uh, had done in the past. So we can just mirror it this way, and then mirror it this way. And then now we've got pretty much our table done. It's not too hard. You know, if you wanted to create a little bit of variation in these, you could do that um, again to sort of just make it a little more um, cartoony. But, you know, I'm not going to spend too much time doing that. So now we just grab the whole object and rotate this by 180 degrees. Pull this over, and we're going to set the pivot to the center, which that looks like a weird place to be the center, but okay. And let's just bake the transform, bake all. Okay, so let's try pivot to center again. And I guess that's the center, sort of on the center of the floor, but. Okay, next we're going to make a chair. So a chair is sort of like this, and it's a very similar process. So we just start with the body of the chair and the legs, and then we'll go on to create this part here. So I'll make a new U U modeler object, 3D mesh. Let's see, now I added a cube. And again, I'll just do a box. I'm not too concerned about scale. I can always adjust that after. I guess we'll do it nice and square. And uh, you know what? I want this to be a bit larger. OK, so that works for me. Now, just look at my reference here. We can just draw some legs on. So again, we're just going to use the box, and we can draw right onto it. And you know that works super well. It's really easy. And uh, you know maybe I want this face to be a little farther over here. We can just grab it and drag it. And again, I forgot to put the loop slices in the darn chair. Maybe I'm going to do that first. Remember to put your loop slices in first, people. It will save you some headache later down the road. So again, this is just to give it a little more style. You know, you could do it this way or this way, you know, however you want your chair to be. Whatever makes you happy. Draw the leg on. And that's weird. Just fix this while we're at it though. Oopsie. So something like that will be fine. So definitely this modeling program is uh, more similar to SketchUp, which I haven't really used myself. Um, I'm just going to mirror these over again like before. Start and done. And then we'll do it on the, uh, let's see, do this on the y-axis, x-axis, there we go. Flip this over. So it's more similar to 
SketchUp, as I was saying, than Blender. So coming over here, sometimes I have to sort of rethink some of my paradigms. If you watch the videos that are made by the creator of this um, software, this asset, you know, he, he definitely does things quite differently than I, I do them. It's interesting to watch his tutorials, although they're really fast, and so you're going to need to slow them down. So if you, you know, want some more uh, maybe advanced techniques than mine, you can go ahead and watch his uh, speed tutorials and just slow them down a bit. Um, just for something maybe a little more advanced than mine, and, you know, he really knows what he's doing as he's actually created this software. So it's an asset, but, it, you know, really it's sort of a software, actually. Um, let's grab boxes. I just sort of yammer on while I'm doing this. And so don't forget, you can actually use the mirror as a live update, which is, uh, you know, great. It's not just for when you're done. So you can see here. And this will just help me sort of estimate what I want to do. And, you know, maybe I'll bring this back a little bit. I'll scale this out. And something like that looks about right for me. That's good. Now, there's lots of different ways we could do this. Next part about adding a top piece, we could just, um, you know, extrude this up and then bring it over on each side. Um, let's see what I did here. So I used a whole new piece on this one, so we can do that too. I think what I did was just drew <laughs> maybe a box before I shifted it back. Because once it shifts back, I'm not sure how well this will draw. Whoopsie, I have no idea where that went. So let's not do a border check. So the border check wants to make sure that it's going to snap on here correctly. And, um, you know, I was able to do this last time, but now this time it seems to be sort of bugging out a bit. So I guess that's not going to happen this time. And that's fine. Last time I was able just to draw on and drag it out. So the other option is, is we can just um, grab this face. <laughs> Why is it not working, guys? I just figured it out, and if you <laughs> can yell at me later, it's, I'm in mirror mode, so it's trying to draw onto the mirrored side. So that probably is just not possible to draw onto the mirrored side. So why don't we go to the mirror and say done, and now it's fixed, and now I grab the box tool and it'll probably draw just fine. Uh, yeah, so now I can just draw this all the way over to the other side a little bit catchy, but good enough for me. And now I'm just going to grab this side and drag it out to sort of where I want. And, you know, maybe tilt this back a little bit as well. You can see this line's not exactly correct, but, um, It's pretty close. Okay, so then I want the symmetrical again. Love the symmetry here. So the mirror tool is my best friend. Start. Done. And now we've done our chair as well. So that wasn't too hard. I didn't time myself to see how long this took. But there you go. You sort of have a ugly cartoon chair. You can duplicate these and make as many as you want. As you can see, each time mine come out a little bit different. Now, something to remember when you do this is light mapping, or the uh, UVs for light mapping, I guess. Yeah, let's check it out. Generate light map UVs are not done automatically. And so even though I have my lighting, let's set the lighting to baked and turn on the lighting. And I'm going to generate lighting. And if you see these objects over here, they're light mapped correctly. While these ones are not light mapped correctly, as you can see. 
And so to fix that, you need to click on the object and make sure you have that generate a light map UV. And you can enable this in the settings to have it done automatically. But it does take a little bit of time to recalculate. And if you start with a, a huge object, I believe it may actually slow down the scene. So, you know, usually it's best just to do it at the end, especially if you're making sort of large objects or, you know, you're a little bit slow or using a slow computer. So now that we've done it, oh, I forgot to set them to static, I guess. So we may still suffer the same light mapping problem here. Okay. And that looks correct, actually. So there we go. So that is the chair and table. And now, if you've been following along the tutorials, you're well on your way to having your own little medieval low-poly scene. Okay, until next time, guys.